What's up everyone? Today I'm gonna to walk you through how to color grade your videos in Final Cut Pro X like a professional without using any LUDs or third party plugins. Easy to show, easy coming and then easy going, but you always got my back like air day. Ocean rising and the mountains falling and I'm by your side because I'm here to stay. I know you got way too much on your mind. In this video, I'm gonna be using footage that was shot in a log format. However, this applies to any kind of footage that you film, whether it was in log, whether it was in a flat profile, or you just started now and you have a standard picture profile on your footage. Real quickly, before we get started, I just wanna mention three quick techniques that you really wanna nail before you even come to color grade that's gonna make your footage look more cinematic and just more professional. And number one, you wanna use complementary colors in your scenes. When you're filming a specific scene, really look at what the person is wearing, the background, all the colors and really use them to your advantage. You co use complementary colors, use contrasting colors and really make that scene pop. Number two, expose your footage correctly. This is gonna save your color grade every single time and it's really going to allow you to really push and pull those colors really where you want them change the hues change the saturation and really make this footage more professional than you could ever imagine and it's quite simply the last one is nail your white balance correctly on camera when you're filming this is going to save you a lot of time a lot of headache and honestly it's really really hard to recover footage when it's not properly shot in the right white balance so nail that white balance and it's really going to make your footage just stand out and go to another level even though it's such a simple technique so now let's get started in the tutorial okay everyone so let's get started first things first i really encourage you all to edit your footage before you start color grading because if you start color grading before you edit your footage it's one going to slow you down tremendously and not just uh, your workflow, but also your computer because you're adding on these layers in Final Cut Pro. And then two, you're gonna waste time color grading footage that you might not even end up using in the final edit. So there's no reason to uh, uh, color grade before you edit. So edit your footage, get that um, edit down, and then get started with color grading. So the first thing that I recommend is we go to Final Cut Pro, go to preferences, and we're gonna go to general. And we wanna change this uh, color correction from color board to color wheels. Honestly, color board is just a very <laughs> poor tool to use to color grade and color wheels is definitely, definitely a lot better. The next thing that you're gonna need to get started is an adjustment layer, so that's what I'm highlighting right here. I'll have a link in the description box below where you can download a free adjustment layer. I don't know why Final Cut Pro doesn't include them, but they're very essential to the process. So once you've downloaded the adjustment layers, then we can get started with the actual color grade. So let me just go and copy this clip right here. All right, and we're gonna drag an adjustment layer. You can find them in the, actually in the title. Mine happens to be right here. It says Final Cut Pro Help. I don't know why. So the first step in the color grade process, the first adjustment layer that we're gonna touch is actually the log transform LUT. And I know I said we're not gonna use LUTs or third party plugins, but this doesn't count as a creative LUT that you bought from some random YouTuber. This is an actual transform LUT that you download from your camera manufacturer. So if you shot with Nikon, if you shot with Canon, if you shot with Sony, if you shot with a, a Lumix, they're gonna have this manufactured um, LUT that transforms your log footage into Rec. 709. So real simple, you're gonna go to color, you're gonna to go to custom LUT, drag that in there. And now as you can see right here, we have the custom LUT and you're just gonna find the one that you use. I happen to use a Sony A7S III. I shot this in S-Log3 and I'm gonna pick the LUT that transforms my footage. As you can see, now we have color. It's not a flat image anymore. So the second adjustment layer, I always go to my color wheels. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna open our video scopes, hit this button right here. And now we can see our waveform, our Luma waveform. So 99, it, 100 is our highlights, that's the brightest that we want our highlights to be, and zero is our shadows, that's the darkest that we want our shadows to be. Right now, we're just focused on exposure, so we wanna balance this out. We don't need to get into the creative aspect and, and trying to create a custom look. We just wanna balance this exposure. So real simply, I'm gonna go to my shadows, and you're gonna see it's gonna affect the waveform right here. So we're gonna go down, push it, and as you can see, now we've added a little bit of contrast just by simply moving the shadow. And then for me, my 100 is right here. So I don't really need to drag this up too high. I don't want my highlights to clip and I don't want my shadows to be crushed and, 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 and just be too dark because again, we're gonna be creatively manipulating this in, a, in a further adjustment layers. So we've properly balanced our exposure. We have our shadows touching zero and we have our highlights touching 100. 
I personally, in this second adjustment layer, I don't start touching the tint, I don't start touching the saturation, or start adding sharpness. This is simply just to like balance our exposure, have a really solid foundation where we can start now creatively affecting and transforming our footage. So we're gonna add another adjustment layer. And this third one, we're gonna be adding a color curve. So we go back to our color here in our effects and we just go to color curve. Again, everything we've added in our adjustment layers, they all are embedded in Final Cut Pro. This is nothing that you have to actually go download other than the adjustment layer. So our third adjustment layer, you really wanna think of the color curves just as a tone curve in Lightroom or Photoshop. It's where we're really gonna start pushing the contrast and really start making a creative look as far as how we want our shadows faded or highlights blown or or do we want a mid-tone that's really, really nice and bright. It's all really creatively up to you and you just want to look at your footage and here start really filling it out and seeing what kind of look is it that you're going for. I'm going by how I want my footage to feel when someone views it. And, and I'm always thinking about my client at the end of the day, like what is it that they want and their vision and how can I produce that? And that's where I start really manipulating this in the color curve. So first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a point right here in my shadow line and I'm just gonna drag this down. I don't wanna push it too far. As you can see, we've already added contrast just by simply moving this one shadow point. That's all we've done and our footage already looks a lot different. So let me show you what that looks like before and after. Before the point and after. <laughs> that's a big difference. Now, uh, I wanna adjust my midtones just a little bit and brighten them up, you know, just like right there, nothing too crazy. Next, I'm gonna make a point right here at our highlights and I'm just gonna drag it up a little bit. Uh, as you can see, the light starts um, getting blown out just a little bit, so I'm not gonna drag that too much. And that already alone, let me show you the before and after of those three points that we've made. Look at that. So at this point, our footage looks pretty good. Is it deliverable? Of course, I could send this to someone and they'd be more than happy of how, how it looks. But now the next adjustment layer that we're gonna add, so let's add one more. Let's go right here, our fourth adjustment layer. At this point, what do we do next? Now we wanna manipulate the colors and we wanna fade certain colors, we wanna brighten certain colors. Again, the couple is the main center focus of this footage, of this video and I need them to pop. And so if you're filming a sport client or you're filming a commercial client or you're filming a product shot, whatever is the main center of focus is what you want to pop. And so we're gonna add another color curve right here. Just simple, go to color curves, add another one. And we've already affected the Luma curve. Now we're gonna go ahead and play with our color curves, our actual color curves. So we're gonna adjust the green, the blue, and if we have to, the red. Um, they already have a lot of red um, in their mid-tones, so there's probably not much that I'm gonna personally do but just keep in mind in your footage. So the second color curve, the way I approach it, my intention is to manipulate the contrast of the colors in my image. So when I'm looking at this image right now, it looks really red. You know, there's a lot of red in the shadow as you can see in here. It's, it's just really warm and it's a bit overly warm in my opinion. So let's say we wanna add more green to the shadow then. All we'd have to do is make a point of the shadow line as you can see now we're adding that, that green to the shadow or if we get a command Z, restart that. If we wanna add some red to the highlights, then we can do that. Um, same thing right here in the blue. We wanna add some blue to the midtones. we can do that. And the great thing about this is, you can just change this and you have the full color wheel and now you can manipulate any color at any given um, point that you want. So like I said, in this image, it just looks really warm to me. So I wanna add some, some green to the shadows because I want it to have that filmic look. I want it to have that vintage look. Um, as you can see right here, I've had it, I have a film border on it. So my intention with this video was to just have it more dreamier, um, have it warm because I think it just makes their melanin pop, their skin tones pop, but also just have a filmic look with the tones that I want. So I'm gonna add some green to the shadow. So let me show you that right here. So um, that looks good. Again, you don't need to do drastic measures. Just look at your footage, see how it's starting to transform, how it's starting to change and the way you're affecting things in the image. And based on what I want to do is I want to add some some blue to the highlights just to balance that green and also keep the red um, balance as well because it's already warm as is. They're, the colors that they're wearing, the skin tone, the, the vintage look of this location. I don't need to go overboard with um, manipulating the red. And my favorite, believe it or not, is uh, Cyan. Uh, I love Cyan and Final Cut and add it into my footage. So that's just a personal thing for me. And we can add... Um, something right here let's see so as you can see it's just slightly changing 
um, the, the highlights and the midtones. So we go to the highlights and um, nothing too crazy. Um, like that, that looks good to me. Maybe just drag it. Yeah, I like that. So it still looks warm now. Um, let me show you the difference now between the green that we had in the shadow and the sign and the highlights. So boom. <laughs> it's it's very subtle but subtle things like that really make a big difference once you complete your color grade so we're gonna add one last adjustment layer and this is really where we get creative and in my opinion we really make the image just completely stand out our last adjustment layer we're gonna be using the hue saturation curves here we're gonna make our final color grade really cohesive make our talent or our couple or our product stand out and obviously affect the saturation and how we want things to ultimately look so we're going to start the hue versus hue and we're just going to do a small circle on our couple skin tone and right away skin tone is the thing that's going to separate you from being an amateur to a more uh, professional and color grading you can obviously tell when someone's getting started or, or someone doesn't have too much knowledge of color grading when you can look at a skin tone it just doesn't look natural it doesn't look organic when we selected her skin tone you can see that it made a point right away on the obviously the hue of her skin tone which is more go towards the, the orange side so i'm just going to make another point here at the red i'm going to leave that right there i'm just going to drag this orange till i feel like it's a natural skin tone uh, as you can see if i go up it makes it really orange if i drag it down it makes it really green um it looked pretty good to begin with but i'm just gonna drag it a little bit down and we can just punch in a little bit just to make sure we're keeping an eye on this. And then we're going to have another point right here. Here we can just drag this up and down, see how it affects the green in the image and the hues that we have. Um, we can just have that right there. So see, now her skin isn't super red orange. Um, we just balanced it a little bit. All right, so that looks pretty good in my opinion. So now we're going to be affecting the individual saturation of the hues. So again, I'm going to go to make a little circle on her skin tone again i'm focusing on skin tone the rest of the tones in the image look really good now i just want to make them pop so again we're going to play around how saturated we want them i don't want it too saturated i feel like it's already looking really good they're green i can definitely um if we look at the the pillows i just want to desaturate them just a little bit maybe make a point right there saturate the blues a little bit yeah a little bit of the purples it's looking really good already now let's go to hue versus luma so we're going to be affecting the luminance of each hue so again go to the skin tone i'm gonna make a point right here the red um if we drag it down you know everything that's really orange gets darker if i bring it up it gets really bright the green point i'm just going to drag it down a little bit i don't want that pillow to be so bright and since they're more in the orange, just by lowering this, it, it makes the orange pop more. We'll bring that blue up a bit. So Luma for saturation, again, we made our point on our skin tone. I usually just go and like separate this because this is the brighter side of the image. So as you can see, automatically the image and their skin tone starts to pop, it really adds some, some nice light to it. Um, let's drag this point over here. And we can see this is more of the shadows. Um, I can just bring the shadows just down a little bit. And then this, look at this. Look at the difference between right here and then right here. Look how it affects the image. Boom. <laughs> Let's see what that looks like. Everything that we've done up to this point. Look at that. Wow. It's subtle, but it makes a big difference. And then lastly, saturation versus saturation. Um, Drag on the skin tone. Let's make a point over here. And we're just going to do this by. So the hue versus saturation curve, you can just think of it as the cherry on top. You know, you're, you're affecting the saturation of different hues. You're changing the hues. And you're really making things pop that you want to pop. And if we want to do one last thing, I'm going to add a vignette. Um, so let's add a vignette right here. So the vignette is just really going to make the sides a little bit blurrier, a little darker, and subtly make the eye automatically go focus on what we're focusing on here in the center of attention, which is the couple. So let's add a little bit of blur. Um, nothing too crazy. 
uh, maybe like six. We can definitely not have this as dark. Uh, uh, that looks kind of good. The size of it, we don't need it that big. We just need to roll off to be just a little bit. That looks pretty good. And the fall off, uh, we just want it to be subtle. We don't need something that crazy. So let's see what that looks like. Oh, that looks good. All right, so let's hit that off real quick. Boom. Big, big difference. And let's turn off the vignette and the hue saturation curves, and then boom. So this was our starting image, shot in S-Log3, very flat profile. And then we added that transformation LUT, boom. It brought the colors back to a Rec. 709 workspace. Um, obviously the image is still pretty flat, so we went and balanced the exposure. That looks pretty good. Then the color curves where we made the biggest difference because we added that contrast and, and, and we and we balanced our, our shadows and our highlights kind of where we want them. So that looks amazing. The second color curve, we wanted to affect the tone and the contrast of individual colors in our image. I wanted a little bit more green in the shadows and some sign in the highlights. That's just my personal preference. And it's also where you, you visually want to create or construct the look that you have in mind for the final image or what the client kind of visioned. So that's what you really are intending to do in the color curve. Again, it's like the tone curve in Photoshop or Lightroom. It's it's where you make the biggest difference in your editing process. And, and then our last adjustment layer is our hue versus saturation curve. And just for fun and giggles, we added a vignette just to really um, bring the center attention to the couple. So I hope this tutorial was helpful. I really wish I had this tutorial when I first started editing in Final Cut Pro X six years ago. And as you can see, it's a very simple process. You don't want to overcomplicate it. You don't need to go out and spend money on third party plugins. If you want to do that, then go ahead. And you don't need to really go around and start downloading LUTs that don't even work for the footage that you're actually filming with. A lot of these LUTs that you buy just have all these colors baked in that's not even really meant for your camera or what you're filming. You can all do this in Final Cut Pro X with the tools and features built in. And to me personally, color grading is all about the feel. It's how you want people to feel when they watch your footage. And that's what you intend to do when you're color grading. So thank you for watching. If this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up, like the video. It really helps out the channel. If you have any questions about this tutorial or color grading in Final Cut Pro, leave a comment in the comment section below and subscribe if you haven't already and stay tuned for more videos and tutorials. Thank you. See you in the next one. Peace.